So when it comes to heart rate training, over the last few years, there's been a shift from the traditional chest strap that people would use, and a lot of them are now based on the wrist, which for a lot of people are not too accurate. There's plenty of reasons why that might be, and there's also plenty of reasons why you might be able to get a really accurate reading from your watch. So for me personally, my experience is that because I've got <laughs> the wrist of a nine-year-old boy, and you can even see today, I don't have the best circulation going on. I also have another issue where I broke both my elbows around 10 years ago in coming down a mountain race. So the radius bone, the one that lies along there, slightly rotated watches sit a little bit wrong for me. So if I do this, it's still pointing out that way. All these little bits add up to the fact that having the sensors here doesn't really work too well for me. And what today's video is really talking about is the introduction of the Coros heart rate monitor. So they haven't had a traditional strap before, it's all been wrist based, whereas this is to be worn on the arm. So I'm going to quickly talk to you about why the arm would be better than the wrist, if that makes sense. <laughs> why you might want to get the Coros heart rate monitor why you might not want to get it. And then I'm gonna go out on some runs and do some testing with it. So like I say, heart rate based training in itself needs a little bit of understanding just to get the most out of it. But in this video, we're just talking about accuracy really. I'm not looking for it to be more accurate than a traditional chest strap. What I am looking at to be more accurate is than is the wrist based stuff, right? So if you are already someone that has a traditional chest strap and it works very well no matter what brand it is and whether you use that with your Coros or with Garmin, Sunter, whatever watch you've got or you've got a mix and match of brands, Polar, if it's working for you and you think that it's giving you accurate data then you don't really need to change anything. I had already opened this to make this a little bit smoother, a bit kind of Blue Peter-esque but I'm not going to do an unboxing, I've taken all the garbage off it and the main things we need are the strap, this is the little charger, so it's USB charger. If you've had a Coros before, you'll know that the connectivity of the chargers aren't always great, if I'm honest. This one is a lot firmer, so that's no problem. I've already charged it. Straight out the box, once you get it out, it should, once it hits your skin, there you go, it will connect and you see that green light so it knows when it's on essentially it knows when it's on your skin obviously i've had to make this a lot looser to fit on this bicep but yeah you can adjust that to suit already i feel like if i had this on and go for a run i'd be happy as soon as i put one of those old traditional ones on i'm unhappy yeah it's a little bit like when my wife comes home at the end of the day, or she was lying on the sofa, um, she's not in, so she won't mind me saying. The first thing that she usually does is undo her bra, whip it off, and uh, yeah, she feels a lot more comfortable. <laughs> That's how I used to feel with those traditional straps. Obviously, um, I'm not comparing myself to the troubles of um, women with bras, but that's another video, I think. Anyway, <laughs> so this should be on now. To connect it, we need the Coros app. Coros. And you get this little piece of paper that says it should just connect if I take a picture of that. So there's that. Let me show you in case you've not seen this. There is my Apex 2. Up in the top corner there, that is the little button you need to press. And then it works like a, um, what are they called? can't remember what they're called, but never mind. So now it's come up with pair new device. I'll hit next. The heart rate monitor is there. I'll hit that. Pairing complete. Bob is your uncle. Gary's your aunt. It's elasticated, so it's not going to move around. The sensor is pretty stable. If I'm running, then I, this is a lot better place to start getting the reading from. When it's at the wrist, you can 
the watch moves a little bit more, it can get sweaty and start to move. If you're a mountain or trail runner, you'll know that your watch moves a bit. Sometimes it's here, you're moving it around. Maybe you're doing navigation or doing different features and you're moving your watch around. Yeah, all that adds up to getting um, not the most accurate of reading. So there's, like I say, there's lots of reasons why it might not always be the watch's fault, but if your watch is moving due to sweat or because you're running hard or whatever, sometimes the watch will slip down a little bit and then it loses the accuracy because there's not the connectivity. In theory, having it up here will be a lot better. So we are now out and about. We are about a mile down the road and I have my heart rate listed as the main data point on my watch. I've done five, no, I've done nine or ten minutes of running and a few warm-up drills just because um, yeah, I'm still coming back from injury, so I have to do these drills before I start any kind of run at the moment. Haven't bored you with that much. What I'm going to do is run down to the next village, which is around six or seven K away. And then I am going to put the strap on, on, no, that's wrong. I'm going to put the strap on <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the Coros arm band, the bicep band on for you and see if it keeps the data stable, see if there's any difference in reading. Um, the run will be easy enough and short enough so that there won't be any heart rate drift to worry about, or there shouldn't be. <laughs> we are now 20 minutes in, settled into the run. Heart rate is saying 119, 120, 121, 118. When I'm on normal, road run like this very easy the um the wrist based heart rate are granted stays pretty stable and um yeah if i was just out for an hour and i wasn't pushing up hills and down hills and i wasn't getting too sweaty and there wasn't grime getting in it and all that kind of stuff and my top wasn't rubbing it and moving it around then yeah it can stay quite stable the issues I have with the wrist based stuff is that if I have a long sleeve top on it, it'll often move it around. If I want to um, have the watch on the outside of my top, especially in winter, then obviously that makes it redundant because I want other data, maybe it be navigation or yeah, whether there's a hill coming up, whatever it might be. So I want my I'll have a traditional Heli Hansen top on or something, a base layer on, and my watch over the base layer. Obviously that's no good for heart rate data. And yeah, so the wrist has lots of limitations in, in that way. So whether it is accurate or not, for me during the winter, it uh, becomes a little bit redundant. Obviously a day like today, I'm gonna have to take this jacket off in a minute, but it's been hammering down lately. As soon as I start to walk for a minute, see my heart rate has dropped down to low 90s so I'll pick it up again gonna keep it constant now for about half an hour well no it'll be 20 minutes before I get to the turn point then I'll stick the strap on yeah so I would have to get back and look at the data because I'm not really used to checking the heart rate so much but what I have noticed is on the wrist it's jumping between 121 up to 128 and a second ago it was at 135 36 kind of thing so that's quite a big range considering i'm on a long flat road and uh yeah keeping it in the same range of effort so it might just be that <laughs> i get a bit of a surge or something but yeah it's not too stable put it that way so we're halfway through i've whipped out the uh chorus band and you can see there that is the sensor and as soon as you put skin to it let's have a look, it will start flashing green so you can tell as soon as you put it on it's going to be an instant connection um yeah the only thing is we've got this long sleeve top on i'm probably gonna have to take this off next to this far mouse to get it on because it's quite tight and i won't get the strap through the top and my massive bicep so uh, yeah, I'll just whip my top off and I'll get back to you. That comes up instantly, so I'll just get back up to speed now around that um, same kind of effort before I start looking 
at the watch and the data, see if there's any difference, visual difference. Um, can't imagine there would be too much on the run like this, but we'll see. So we've done a good hour of running now. I've had the car strap, oh, hang on, more of this. Had the car strap on for 20 minutes. I'll better keep running actually. <laughs> yeah. I've had, had it on for about 20 minutes and it's weird checking the heart rate for me because obviously I just haven't in the past too much in a run. Uh, it's at 126 now. See it's kind of holding there. What I've noticed is it's definitely more stable going up a bit of a hill now so it's creeping up. Pick the worst time to start speaking to you uh, to show you that it stays stable. But yeah 130, 131 that's been pretty much it for the last 20 minutes. It's not jumped up to 140 it's not dropped to 120 apart from did have a quick pee so I'm sure it did then. Um, so first initial thoughts is it's accurate and it's staying accurate, staying stable but I guess when you get into the hills that is the true test for me personally so for now I'll have a look back at the data when I get home uh, but initial thoughts are as expected accurate stay stable and way more comfortable not got anything falling down and slipping around haven't got to lick anything before i start not if i don't want to anyway just go straight on connect straight away but remember this isn't a sales pitch if you have any kind of heart rate monitor around your chest and you're happy with it i don't really see um the point in changing that right now in the future Kavos may introduce more features I guess that's what they're good at and this is their first dip in the market with this kind of heart rate monitor so yeah keep your eyes peeled but if you're happy with your heart rate strap and you think it's accurate and you know how to use heart rate um, as a training metric I don't think you have to change if you're like me and you just didn't get on with the chest strap and you understand that the wrist readings aren't too accurate then it is something to look at okay i have got an interval session coming up in two days i'm going to wear it then so i'll combine the next video with my interval session coming back from injury and using the heart rate monitor then so it'll be a bit of a mix yeah so otherwise i'll be banging on this video way too long okay i'm gonna get back to the house